Okay, so it's been announced that Sajid Javid is going to implement uh, new powers for the police, which will mean that they now have more more flexibility to do stop and search without um, reasonable grounds. Uh, so basically, um, freeing their hands, I guess you could say. Um, in 2014, when she was Home Secretary, Theresa May um, brought in legislation, as I understand it, whereby the police could only do stop and search if they had reasonable grounds for suspicion. Uh, and Saji Javid ha is putting forward this um, trial, uh, I think it's being called, for seven police forces, including London and South Yorkshire. Now, apparently in the mid-2000s, Glasgow tried this scheme and it was very successful. It cut knife crime in Glasgow by 50%. Glasgow, of course, has long had a reputation as a violent city. Um, apparently it has more gangs per capita than any city in Western Europe, including London, um, per capita, that is. Clearly something needs to be done about this situation. Um, because not only is it awful when it happens, a, a thing that people don't, that isn't often discussed when we think about crime is actually the health impact of rising public anxiety. That's an aspect of crime that maybe isn't looked at as much as it should be. Um, there's crime itself, which is terrible, but there's actually increasing fears of crime, which itself is a problem because it, it creates um, anxiety, which is a health problem. You know, it's a quality of life infraction. So I think it's right that Javid is taking a tough line. Now, in terms of the controversies around the stop and search, one of the main criticisms, uh, for example, in London, is that, as someone put it, she was interviewed, um, I heard this on the radio, according to this woman, she said it will give the police um, more excuses to do, to target minorities. Now, I don't think she was an expert or anything, she was just a, random person. Presumably um, she was BME herself. Um, the argument being that it will, the police are institutionally racist and therefore they will only target black and South Asian youths. Well, this is a, this is a difficult one because if I was black or British Pakistani and I was stopped because of the color of my skin and I knew that I was innocent, I'd be infuriated, I would be, I'd feel embarrassed, I'd feel angry. Um, so I can understand people who really are innocent getting stopped by the police, not once, not twice, many times possibly, and they actually are innocent. I can totally understand them feeling frustrated by it, more than frustrated in fact. But I do believe that the absolute priority at the very top is public safety. That comes above anything else. So if it's a question of implementing stop and search, which is focusing on black youths, because the majority of stabbings, the majority of victims are black youths, black on black crime is a massive problem in the capital. So if it was based on that sort of thing, what does that mean? It would mean there's charges of racism, and it would mean that there is inconvenience and embarrassment for potentially innocent people. But the flip side of that is it could also mean that knife thugs are stopped. The weapons are confiscated uh, and that's potentially saving a life. So really, ultimately, what this is is weighing up um, public safety versus political correctness. Now, the mayor of London um, has long put identity politics, in my opinion, ahead of public safety. Um, it's a difficult one because I I do understand the frustrations of innocent people, but it's a simple irrefutable fact that there is a very serious problem in the capital with young black men in gangs. No amount of political correctness changes that, it's just a fact. And there can be arguments about why they get involved in gangs, there could be arguments about all the root causes. But it is a fact that there is a disproportionate number of young black men involved in knife crime. If we look at the vast majority of victims, um, they have been also young black men, occasionally South Asian, but the vast majority are young black men. Now, why is this happening? 
there's going to be a lot of reasons, and I'm not going to get into them here. There's going to be a lot of reasons why young black men get involved in crime. But if there is evidence to suggest that stop and search works, if that means some people will be inconvenienced or embarrassed, that's unfortunate. But the greater question is public safety. And if stop and search is proven to work, as it apparently did in Glasgow, then it has to be implemented. So, for example, if the police see a group of young black men, those young black men might well be innocent. But if the police do a stop and search and they find they have no weapons, then fine, they have no weapons. Let them go. If they do have weapons, charge them. And I believe it should be an instant custodial sentence if someone's carrying a knife. Because the way I see it is if they're carrying a knife, they intend to use it. The self-defense argument is used by every single gang member out there. So I think it's a phony argument because until you get tough on this, it's just going to continue. And I think there's a range of reasons why knife crime has risen in this country, why knife homicides have risen. I think police cuts is one of them. I think May's approach as Home Secretary may well have been a factor as well. I don't think it's that the UK is more poor than it was five years ago. I, I don't know what the figures are, but I don't think that's the case. I think there's other factors at play. And I strongly believe drill music needs to be heavily um, controlled. I, I know it's hard to just ban it outright, but anyone who thinks drill music is just another genre is deluded. Drill so-called music is nothing but the calling card of fucks. But I want to see a Home Secretary getting tough. I don't think that politicians should be negotiating with criminals. I don't think it should be a case of, oh, well, we'll give you what you want. Please don't stab someone. These are dangerous individuals, and the only appropriate approach is a heavy one. The public want reassurance. We're never, ever going to have a situation where there's no crime, especially in a city like London, almost 9 million people. Of course, it's going to be crime. Of course, it's going to be murders. I think it would be pretty unrealistic if anyone thought that a city as big as London would you know, have no murders. But this situation of particularly young people just being stabbed, almost every day it's you know it is getting out of control and it's it's horrendous so if temporary inconvenience if being embarrassed being frustrated is the price to pay for public safety then frankly public safety has to come first and the thing about this is about the racism issue that's protecting young black men because they are the main victims of this as well so those who shout racism are ignoring the fact that actually because they form many of the victims, if this approach is proven to work, then it would actually be protecting them. So it's, it's a difficult one. I, you know, a while back I would have said, oh, no, it's totally, you know, you can't just arrest someone based on the color of their skin. But here's the thing, we're not talking about arrests, we're talking about the police taking common sense approaches to reduce violent crime. And if their intelligence, if the statistics say that the majority of knife crime is committed by young black men, if that is what the statistics say, if that is evidence-based, and this is very important, it has to be evidence-based, but if it is, the police have a responsibility to act. And they can't have their hands tied by, oh, well, we'll be seen as racist if we intervene. So I welcome this. Um, again, I understand if you're innocent, it's frustrating, but you need to see the bigger picture. And ultimately, public safety must come first.